I've been working on the AI client implementation, and in this presentation, I would like to talk about how far we have already progressed with that, and also uh, discuss the uh, future uh, ways of uh, development concerning uh, scalability, uh, security, and decentralization. I'm proud to announce that we uh, already have a proof of concept implementation of the Light Client protocol. As many of you probably already know, a, the purpose of a Light Client is to pro provide safe access to the Ethereum network without having to uh, download and process every block and uh, keep and update an entire copy of the state locally. Uh, for all these purposes, we have developed the uh, LAST protocol. Uh, Mm, it's, uh, the, there's a topology uh, shown on, in the slide, uh, which sh uh, shows that, uh, uh, that just uh, the blue diamonds uh, who represent traditional full nodes and the green diamonds who are uh, light nodes connecting to them. And, uh, and uh, the green light nodes are downloading only block headers uh, as each uh, new block appears in the blockchain, which is a, a lot less network traffic uh, than uh, downloading entire blocks. And uh, they only uh, download uh, uh, block and state data uh, as it is required by uh, the applications. Uh, this, uh, so uh, this protocol is for, for, for uh, on-demand retrieval and block and state data. And uh, also, uh, it can uh, relay transactions to the ETH consensus network, because uh, the last network is uh, uh, somewhat separated from the, from the consensus network. Uh, the uh, full nodes definitely support uh, both ETH and LAST protocol, serving the light nodes, and the light nodes are only communicating with, with the uh, LAST protocol. Uh, this structure is uh, working, and it is uh, uh, quite efficient at, uh, with a low number of uh, light nodes. But uh, as the network grows, we, we will come into scalability and centralization issues, because as uh, you can see in the picture, uh, light nodes uh, currently can only connect to full nodes, and uh, uh, this is also both a performance uh, bottleneck and uh, after some time even a, a sec can be a security uh, issue. So uh, it would be m beneficial if we uh, consider, consider uh, serving, serving light nodes a service, that if uh, light nodes uh, could become uh, providers of the service too. Uh, if we are talking about uh, centralization problems in the context of a light client, uh, we have to address two important questions. One of them is the concern of security. Uh, how can we uh, trust our headers? Because uh, the light clients wor work in a way that uh, well, the Patricia tree structure ensures <coughs> that if we download any uh, uh, block or state data, we can check its validity by uh, by checking a Merkle proof and, uh, and uh, checking it against the root hashes found in the block headers. So if we have correct headers, we have a secure access to the network. But uh, uh, as we are not uh, processing, light nodes are not processing the blocks, they cannot directly check the validity of the headers. So we definitely need some uh, security uh, measures to prevent uh, attacks. Uh, one obvious way is uh, checking the proof of work and later proof of stake found in the block headers. Uh, which makes it uh, harder and more expensive to forge uh, false blocks or, or headers. Uh, proof of stake will definitely uh, provide a better level of security in this aspect, but uh, proof of work uh, will also be sufficient, even, uh, and we can also increase uh, its security if we dem demand a few confirmations before we accept each header. We can also increase uh, security by fetching uh, headers from multiple peers, preferably uh, randomly selecti selected peers, and only accept headers as part of the canonical chain when we have uh, received them from the majority of our, of our peers. The other question brings us to the main topic of my presentation, the efficient uh, distribution uh, of uh, the blockchain, the block and state data. Uh, and uh, the uh, general idea about this uh, was originally that uh, uh, the light nodes should uh, collectively run a DHT service, uh, either Swarm or IPFS or whatever, and, uh, and, and store the state data in the DHT. 
uh, this approach is demonstrated on this next slide, where uh, one node shown on the left tries to uh, do a, a state retrieval. He uh, wants to retrieve a key starting with B, 4, F, 3, whatever. Uh, he wants, uh, needs to uh, retrieve the, the uh, state uh, try node, uh, take the hash from uh, the element B of the, of the node, and then uh, use it as a hash and retrieve that node, and uh, uh, sequentially retrieve, uh, retrieve uh, try nodes until it finds the final node, which is the value it is looking for. Uh, there are a uh, uh, lot of other light nodes shown on this picture, because if we are uh, putting the state on DHT, well, DSTs use uh, some, uh, most DSTs use uh, a, the so called Scademia structure, which is a great and efficient DHT topology. Both Swarm and IPFS use it. And uh, uh, it uh, requires uh, 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 nodes uh, to access a few intermediate other nodes before, before finding the node that can serve the data they are looking for. They are getting uh, closer to the, looking, uh, the address they are looking for, and even closer, and even closer, and after some time, they are finding the data. So uh, this DHT approach is great. Uh, it has uh, one minor uh, drawback that uh, a DHT lookup is not, not particularly fast. I don't want to give any estimates of how fast it is, but uh, it, it takes some time. And uh, it is usually not a problem with a general purpose uh, data storage application, where we, if you are looking for a lot of uh, small pieces of data, you can usually do that uh, lookups, uh, those lookups uh, in parallel. But uh, this is not the case with a try lookup, because you only get to know the hashes uh, sequentially. So uh, a state lookup could uh, take pretty long. Uh, well, uh, so uh, to address th this problem, uh, let me present a, a, an alternative uh, approach, which is, uh, which is quite similar to the DHT approach, actually. And it can use uh, much, uh, most of the, uh, mostly the same, same code base. It's just a slight modification, but a great improvement in efficiency. So uh, while in a DHT, uh, nodes, uh, each node is assigned a range of hashes and stores data uh, whose hash uh, falls into, into that range, we can uh, modify this approach to be more uh, state try specific and uh, assign each node a range of the state keys, state addresses. So uh, basically, each uh, peer uh, would uh, uh, store and constantly observe and update a slice of the state, uh, basically, technically, a few adjacent subtrees, which is uh, quite uh, efficient in terms of storage and uh, updating. Uh, and uh, the advantage of this approach uh, is uh, pretty obvious, because uh, these nodes can be organized in an academia table the same way uh, the DHT nodes can be organized, basically with the same code, same, same uh, implementation. And uh, it, it only takes one, uh, one global lookup, which is expensive, to, uh, to find a node who can serve us an entire Merkel proof, which is uh, basically uh, all the nodes starting from the state root up to the value node. This, uh, this picture shows uh, two uh, such nodes. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, observing the key ranges B4C to B4F. The other one is observing, the right one is observing uh, BE0 to BE7 prefixes. And this next slide shows how this approach actually works, would, would work. Uh, each, uh, each node, uh, uh, as, every, as new blocks, blocks appear in the canonical chain, each, uh, each peer can uh, update their part of the part of the try from a node who is observing the same or larger uh, key range. Uh, and in this uh, aspect, full nodes are, uh, are, are, are nodes who are uh, observing the entire, entire state, of course. But uh, even light nodes can choose to observe the, uh, the entire state, but not process blocks, just download states. There is a, a big advantage of this, this approach, uh, in addition to increased performance, uh, which is the fact that uh, if you are updating uh, your try, downloading the new try nodes that, the, uh, uh, that exist in the new version of the state in that uh, slice of the try, 
uh, you can exactly know uh, when you have retrieved all those uh, all those nodes. Uh, this is basically similar to uh, checking, downloading, and checking a Merkle proof. It's just uh, works for an entire range of keys, an entire subtree. But uh, it can be similarly checked against the state root uh, found in the block header. Uh, this is big. This is a big advantage because uh, this way. Uh, we can easily uh, uh, measure the quality of the service if we consider uh, serving uh, either subtrees or individual keys, which is well, which is a service, and which uh, eventually uh, nodes will be paying for. Uh, then it is uh, it is very beneficial if we can uh, exactly measure its uh, its its uh, the, the value of the service, the quality of the service, and this is uh, especially beneficial for smaller nodes. Uh, because uh, uh, if they are choosing uh, a, a, a key range that is uh, not yet uh, so heavily served, they can provide a service that, that is just as valuable the, as the service of the full nodes, of course, with a smaller volume. Mm. And uh, uh, I, so far, I have only talked about uh, the uh, distribution and uh, storage of the state, and we we also have to uh, uh, made, make the, the 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 actual blockchain accessible, which uh, includes the uh, transactions and the uh, receipts belonging to those transactions for each block. This is a much easier problem than uh, distributing the state. Uh, for this, the the uh, the traditional DHT approach is uh, just as efficient as, as any, but uh, maybe if we we we, uh, we already have uh, have peers uh, who are uh, who, who have uh, ranges assigned to them, uh, it it is it might be beneficial to store every transaction and especially every receipt uh, by uh, reference by the block block hash of the block they are belonging to, because uh, if we are uh, uh, processing logs. Yes, light clients definitely need to uh, process uh, logs efficiently. Uh, then, then log processing consists of uh, checking uh, Bloom filters, and if we are uh, finding a positive match, we have to download all the receipts belonging to a, to a block. So, uh, storing uh, storing the, the the receipts belonging to one block at one place might be a good idea. Uh, and it is also uh, worth mentioning that. Uh, uh, the relaying uh, of uh, transaction, transactions uh, can be uh, how, 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 we how we should approach this problem in a network where we have a lot of light nodes. Uh, if we have much more light nodes than full nodes, which uh, will hopefully be the case in a healthy network, uh, we, can, uh, we, we will probably have to propagate every new transaction to the ETH network through multiple, multiple light nodes. Uh, because most of them won't have direct access to a full node. And if we do that, it, it would be beneficial to demand that uh, every new transaction is propagated uh, through the peers whose uh, address ranges uh, include the account that has signed the actual transaction. The, uh, it, is, it is very useful because uh, this way every, every propagating, every forwarding peer can uh, check the validity of the transaction. Uh, because uh, they have information about the account that has signed it, and uh, the checking the validity mostly consists of uh, checking the available uh, funds uh, of the, the signer and uh, and the transaction nodes. So if uh, every propagating uh, uh, light node can uh, uh, both uh, check the account balances and nonces and also that do some uh, filtering and ordering by the gas price of uh, the uh, by the transaction creator, uh, this this uh, forms a very effective uh, spam protection for the from the consensus network uh, by only forwarding transactions to the main network, which will probably be actually included in the in the canonical chain. And uh, finally, to uh, conclude my uh, presentation, uh, I would like to. Uh, uh, talk about uh, our future plans. Uh, give a quick uh, roadmap of, uh, of, of 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 the future developments as I currently see it. We have planned uh, several stages of release. 
uh, the first stage, uh, which is which will hopefully be ready uh, pretty 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 soon, uh, may be released in our next version of the Go Ethereum client. We we'll already be able to uh, retrieve data on demand to the first version of the REST protocol, uh, right now only from from full nodes, and probably also uh, be able to relay transactions. Uh, this will be a more or less uh, usable light client, but. Uh, Full functionality will be reached at stage two, which will also be able to uh, process and filter logs. And uh, probably the uh, multi sampling uh, header retrieval will also be included, which is what I talked about uh, before uh, fetching headers from multiple peers to increase security. Uh, this release will uh, still have. Uh, uh, we still have centralization issues uh, with very great networks, but for uh, for the time coming, I think it will be it will be quite sufficient. And uh, in the subsequent uh, stages of uh, development, uh, we should definitely address the scalability issues. Uh, it is uh, it will still it should still be up for discussion whether we uh, try to go with the regular traditional DHT approach or the. Uh, uh, state uh, sp splitting by, by by state fees approach. Whatever we have to we have to uh, develop a distributed service, which all which which also includes a simple micropayment system. And uh, for this purpose, we can probably use the so-called swap protocols for account counting protocol, which is a, a very simple but very useful uh, uh, useful. Uh, Kind of payment channel implementation that is used by Swarm, and uh, we can also use it for for like client services. And uh, by uh, when when the uh, development or developments of the proof of stake consensus protocol uh, advance, we can also uh, uh, employ those mechanisms. Uh, so basically, porting the light client to proof of stake will provide a much better protection against. Uh, uh, against uh, fraudulent nodes and the uh, civil attacks. Basically, it works as a reputation system because uh, uh, nodes with a stake that they can lose by trying to attack, it, 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 it gives them some kind of reputation and uh, definitely makes uh, attempted attacks uh, more expensive. So by the time uh, uh, we, we will reach the point we can switch over to the pr proof of stake consensus, net consensus protocol, uh, we will hopefully also have a massively scalable and uh, and uh, secure uh, light client network too. And uh, I think uh, this is all I could uh, <laughs> tell you about this uh, these uh, uh, developments in 20 minutes. So thank you for your attention.